sei di me C'è la luce dei miei occhi mi rifletto dentro te C'è nel corpo la mia pelle se mi stringi forte sai Questa vita si riaccende in ogni bacio che mi dà How are you doing? Hello everybody and welcome in sign language. Saturday, sunny shining here in Vegas. How about you? I know it's 5 p.m. for you guys on the east coast of the United States. I see some people appearing from Australia where it's good morning to you. I see Antonio appearing from Italy, normally from Ireland, which where is in Europe anyway. It's evening for you guys. It's even 22 if you are in England or in London. I don't see Richard. Normally he's uh, uh, there is night and for you guys, for te Antonio, ora 23 in Italia. I see uh, guys, new people over there. So guys, where are you watching from? I see uh, Jenny Dolly watching from Chicago. We see Salma, she's here in Vegas together with Roger. I see there, I see Diane. So welcome all of you of my uh, circle of love. And I see also a lot of people who is on Instagram, JJ. Uh, Giuseppe, I have people from London. Giuseppe, uh, we have also Instagram today. So we have people from London. Uh, maybe Melina is watching, the wonderful lady that always does my hair, my ink. Belgium, my we angel. have. We have Belgium. So we have the whole world. So guys, let me know where you're watching, where you're watching from if you're new and welcome. I am Giada Valenti. I am a singer and a songwriter. Of course, born and raised in Venice, Italy. But of course, on Saturday, I am Jada, the wannabe chef, because you know, I'm still a singer and songwriter, but on Saturday, I do love to cook delicious recipe. Yes, why am I doing all this time? Because I uh, really love to communicate with everybody, include everybody into my world. So if you're watching and you are 
deaf, you cannot hear. I always do very little, very little sign language because I am learning a little bit of your sign language. Thanks to Diane Fiorentino. And September, as you see on the picture, you guys on Instagram can see it, but September is Deaf Awareness Month. So we have been doing a lot of activity here on the Jedi Life, Life Besides Signs. And just yesterday, I posted on my Patreon page, and in a few days, it's going to be all over also on social media, a video where I'm singing What a Wonderful World, singing with my voice and singing it with my hand, thanks to Diane Fiorentino, which I'm so grateful to her. So if you uh, have not done it, please join me on my patreon.com slash Valenti to see it or just wait a couple of days. You're going to see it also here on Facebook and on YouTube. And please, when you see it, share it because we need to create awareness during COVID-19, the mass, people that cannot hear has a lot of difficulty to communicate with us. And we need to be connected with everybody. So we need to communicate. So thank you, Diane, for teaching me this sign language. I really enjoyed it very much. And it was nice to sing with my hands. What a wonderful world. So without further ado, I see all of you are, let me know where you're watching from, guys. I love you. For the ones that are new, let's say I am a singer and a songwriter, and I started to do this Jada Live, so they're called March 12th. No, March 18. March 12 was my last concert here in Las Vegas. Then Vegas closed, the whole world closed because of uh, COVID 19. I was missing you guys so much. I decided to go online just to say a quick hello here from my living room. And before I knew, we did it 100 days every day with interview, cooking, singing. We had so much fun. And you guys have become my circle of love. And I really, guys, love you very much. Now we, uh, since a few months, we are doing the summer schedule, which uh, are normally uh, Tuesday. I say normally because this week was different. It was Tuesday. Normally we have an interview, celebrity interview. We have some amazing friends in the last month. On Thursday, I do my uh, Italian episode where we fly virtually to Italy together with my friends of Italian uh, living. And on Saturday, like today, we are in the kitchen where I was trying to cook something that I love. I cook my, my lunch basically in front of you and you always guys love my recipe. Many of you have made my recipe and you always send me pictures which I think I love it very much. So please continue to do so. Which brings me to mind that today is actually six months that I've been doing this. Six months. Means for six months we have been all at home during this COVID-19 and I've been at home together with you and you have been at home together with me. This is so special. So big celebration today. I'm going to make a cocktail to celebrate. And what else? Yes, why was not live this week on Tuesday? On Thursday, computer problem was a kind of a stressful week. Besides, I was also busy with uh, uh, enjoyable things like making new music and the video clip and the recording of What a Wonderful World. But guys, computer problems are solved because thanks to one of our circle of love, Roger Scallion, that I got to meet like Thursday, that's us having a cup of coffee. Roger Stallion, help me with a new computer that will arrive here in 10 days, right, Rogers? I think in 10 days I'm gonna have a new computer, which means it's gonna make my life so much easier. So we're never gonna skip uh, a days uh, uh, together. We're all, always gonna be on time. I saw Joy said, Jada is late, it's true I'm late because my computer sometimes has delayed and it doesn't do what I want to do, it doesn't want to do, but thanks to Rogers, so we have to thank, thank Rogers with, I thank you with all my heart, love you Rogers, I'm going to have in 10 days a new computer, you guys help me with everything, remember Doug Hartline, that I didn't see there today uh, yet, but Doug got me the mixer, so uh, I'm able to sing with you, um, um, Richard gave me from London, he gave me a stand so I can have even Instagram on, on my stand. So guys, you've been so generous and thank you also for all the donations, all the people that join me on Patreon, you keep supporting me and I keep doing music, I keep singing my heart and guys, I love you very much. Without further ado, what is happening today on the Java Live? Today, we are cooking. That's what is happening, a delicious recipe. So let me see. I'm gonna cook something for my Venice. I'm gonna take you to Venice. I decided I miss my Venice, everybody miss their hometown, and I'm gonna make this. I'm gonna teach you how to make one of the most delicious and easy recipe and traditional recipe from Venice, Rizzi e Bizi, as we call it, in dialect of from Venice, in dialect of Venice, which is Riso e Piselli in a real Italian, but Rizzi e Bizi is in dialect of Venice, and is a traditional Venetian uh, risotto with uh, peas, so Venetian style. 
And funny enough, for us in Venice, it's just like an everyday kind of dish. But yesterday I went uh, for lunch with uh, Sam and Patrick here in Las Vegas, two friends of mine, to talk about some, some business we want to do together. And at the restaurant, Patrick ordered Rizi e Bizi. Well, it was called Venetian style rice with peas. And I, I didn't order it myself because I knew I would have it today for lunch. But it looked pretty, pretty decent. And uh, actually the food was good. So thank you to... Um, Patrick and Sam for inviting us yesterday. So today we're going to make a uh, Rizi and Bizi and of course as I said we celebrate six months of Jada Life. We are going to make a cocktail. JJ is going to show you the picture. Here is the bubbly piña colada. Yes, that is made actually, funny enough, with, uh, with the Prosecco. With Prosecco and of course I keep using this Prosecco of dear friends of mine from the region where I was born and raised, from Bosco del Merlo. I know, Roger, you uh, deserve a bottle, so I'm going to see Roger in a couple of days, and he will have my Bosco del Merlo. I also give, I'm going to give you one bottle of the Pinot Grigio Rosé because it's delicious. You know, I'm not a wine drinker. I'm just educating myself, and you guys have been with me through this journey in the planning of wine, and I've learned a lot about wine, and I've learned how to appreciate the good ones. So I will continue to do so because, guys, I noticed that you uh, like, so I'm going to have different wine and uh, different cocktails through all the fall and then the winter because Lord knows how long we are going to be in this situation but it doesn't matter because we are together and we will keep continuing sharing love together. So we will make the cup this and of course the end of the program as always tradition that started uh, thanks to Doug Hartling and he's not my chief editor anymore. I have a lot of help now from Roger Scallion. We're going to do at the end of the programs also birthday and events of this week. Since the whole week I wasn't live, so we're going to go through my favorite people and favorite events of uh, the history of this month. Who else is there, JJ? I see also Peter Formica. Where are you watching from? From Victoria, Australia. We have more people from Australia. Antonio, you're still in Italy, right? Where are you in Italy? Please let me know because I don't remember uh, where we are. So let's make a cocktail before uh, we make the risotto and we fly very briefly to Venice because we have to keep the tradition, remember? That we go to Venice, we have to go. So today we go to Italy quickly to Venice with a couple of fan facts. But before further ado, let me make together, let me take all my paper out of here. We are going to be making a cocktail. You know, keep in mind, Jada doesn't know how to make cocktails. So Jada has a computer here and I found this uh, recipe and I'm going to... Uh, Make it together with you. Maybe I can keep it here. It doesn't matter. Put it here. So it's called the bubbly pina colada. JJ is going to show you the ingredients in a second. Basically, you only need to make it a uh, Malibu, which uh, I, I didn't even know it was existing. I saw it was a beach in California, but apparently it's also a liquor. You need pineapple juice, you need coconut cream, and sparkling wine. JJ, do you have a card that they can see all the ingredients to make this one? Yeah, bubbly. Pina Colada. I like the color. The, it's very nice. It's still summery. It's still a couple of last day of summer. So, so let's do it before we go to kind of fall colors and fall kind of um, cocktails. So this is a cocktail in sign languages. It actually is made with white sparkling, sparkling uh, wine, which I use for the Merlot. It is made with coconut cream and it's made with uh, Pineapple, pineapple, I think this is the sign for pineapple, if I remember well, right, Diane? Pineapple, and of course, it's made with some rules, alcohol, I guess this is the sign for alcohol, some ice, and that's it. So, shall we make it? Let me read how to make it. So, you have to fill a cup with ice. So, I did that, and then they say that I need to put inside my coconut cream. This, the recipe that you saw in the card is actually for one. So, I'm making actually for one. But then we're going to share it, JJ and me. So this is for one, the recipe that you saw, but I'm going to make two cocktails. So I put the coconut cream. I'm going to put the all. It smells actually delicious. What is inside, JJ? Do you know? Rum. Rum. It's rum. So this Malibu, and you know me, I always buy the smallest bottle I can find. So I'm going to put it all in. Here we go. Let's keep the bottle over there. Then I need to have... Just a little bit, four OZ of pineapple, which I guess is something like that. Something like that. I'm gonna put it in. What do they say? And then they say I need to shake it, which is always uh, 
the fun part of making the cocktail. You shake it. You may just say I need to shake it more. So we're going to shake them. Can you still hear me, guys? Also, they are in Australia. JJ, this is an app, right? Oh, JJ, I need to turn it around. JJ is doing sign language too, then. A different sign language. So I need to turn it up. Everything is in there. Voila. So now I have to put this little fella. Because you remember last week? No, I need to put the key. Oh, JJ said, you see, last week it went wrong, and now it went wrong again because I can't open it. So JJ is going to open this little file again. Last week, you remember, I put everything in a glass, and I was not supposed to put that uh, ice in. So I forgot because after I shake it, I need to put the most important ingredient, which is the Prosecco. It's already open. We didn't drink any Prosecco this week, and this is my favorite, the Bosco and Mello. But we put this one in, and the bottle was still in. So I'm going to put how much, JJ? There is a... Most of the thing actually is set, so I'm going to fill the cup. I'm going to finish the bottle. The bottle is finished. Here we go. So next week, we're going to open a new one. At this time, last week, remember, I put this fellow in, and, oh, I forgot something again. Take a piece. Yeah, you see, I need to read the thing. He said, when I put it in, I need to, I can cook, but I can make coffee. So. You have to, to steer with the thing, you know? I bought this cocktail set and it comes in the, with this little, little, very long spoon. So it's a little spoon with a lock stick. And at this time, JJ, I'm right now, right? And at this time, finally, I can put these little things. Oh, and JJ's laughing. I have to take this little fellow out because the ice doesn't have to go on the glasses. You have to use these glasses, which apparently are, uh, what, is, what am I making? Pina colada glasses, for me a Coca-Cola glasses. And at this time, I'm going to pour it in the glasses with no ice. So just a little bit for me, and all the rest is going to be to change eh? Remember, this is supposed to be a portion for one. What? JJ, you got a big glass for yourself. So I can put this fellow away. And at this time, you can decorate it with some pineapple. There we go. Guys, are you going to make these cocktails? Are you going to make it? Next time, maybe I'll post it ahead. and you Make it for tomorrow when we do the Patreon so we can sing and get drunk together. So here is what they call the bubbling piña colada made with Prosecco, Malibu, coconut cream, and uh, what was the other? Pineapple. Pineapple uh, juice. juice. So, JJ, this is yours. Don't drink it all, otherwise the camera work is going to be incredible bad today. But let's just play. So, Let's raise the glass and see how this piña colada, bubbling piña colada is. You know what it is? I don't drink, but it's kind, it's kind of delicious. If you like coconut and if you like the pineapple. So, ching ching, we are celebrating six months of Jada life. So, I keep my drink here. This is supposed to be, is this a cocktail for before or after? I think. People, you have to let me, when do you, when do you drink piña colada? Before you cook? After you cook? Before, JJ said before, so it's good. So before lunch, you can have a piña colada, then you can take a nap of six hours, and then you can have your lunch. That would be me if I drink the glass that I gave to JJ. JJ, don't drink it all. Otherwise, we're gonna be in really, really big problem. So we are gonna, I'm gonna show you in a second how to make the famous Rizzi Ebizi a traditional recipe from Venice, which I already made here. It's still nice and warm. It's going to be my lunch. But before we do that, I said, let's we skip Thursday. We didn't go to Italy on Thursday. So I thought, let's go to Italy on Saturday very quickly. Of course, with just a little videos I made about streets of water and streets to walk in Venice, about the cars of Venice, which are the boats and the gondola. And something that you may not know about the Venetian blinds, the whole world now knows them as Venetian blinds, but of course, you're going to find out in a second that they have a completely different name uh, in Venice. What, JJ? The people from Instagram might want to uh, watch it again on YouTube. Oh yeah, JJ is telling me, because you cannot see the video that I'm showing now. You guys on Instagram cannot see the video that everybody from uh, Facebook, YouTube, and Periscope, and Twitch can see. So if you want to see it later, you go on my YouTube channel or on Facebook, if you are on my Facebook, and you can see the video that I'm going to start. So because if you watch that video, 
we go every time we go imaginary to Italy. So I just want to start this video, which is uh, the really streets of Venice. I thought let's let's go to Venice and walk a little bit. Of course, the real streets of Venice are the canal, they're the Grand Canal, the biggest one, the big uh, and the small one are all the streets of water. And we have learned from uh, uh, different episodes that I have done that, of course, is on the streets that the police uh, goes through and also the ambulance and the firefighters and everybody here, you see them. So we always say that you recognize the tourists from the Venetians because the tourists, when they hear the ambulance, for instance, they just move aside from the, from the, the stoop, but that's not where the police is coming, like in normal things. But because the real streets are the canal, the streets to walk are just secondary streets because they are entrance uh, to streets, to a palace also from the streets, of course, but they are small. That's why they're very small. If you want the house small, this is the smallest, it's Scala da Lisco, it's only 21 inch wide. Of course, uh, Venice has so many cars, but also Venice has a problem with traffic. You see that? Venice is congested. There's no, uh, look at the scondola in the little canal, so there's no place to park boats anymore. So even for us Venetians, the best way to move around is not by boats anymore, by walking. Look at those streets. If you've been there, you know. And can you go with a bike on Venice? No, you can only go on a bike on the Lido. But as you can see, some friends of mine and many people in Venice have been very creative, creating bike that they can use on the canal. And actually some of them you can even, in some hotels, you can rent them. It's a lot of fun. It's kind of dangerous. And you're not allowed to go on the big canals because it's too dangerous because you have the speed bump. So uh, you have to have a kind of permit to take them, which, I mean, streets of water, streets to walk. If you wonder, is an island, right? If you wonder how many streets are in Venice, JJ can start the video number two. I found out that in Venice we have 2,650 streets and the names of the streets, uh, the Calle, the Campielli, they are very, very funny in Venice because they, the name of the streets came from the uh, locations. So, so they were near the church or near uh, uh, where somebody was born, for instance. Here's one, you see Calle del Forno, which means uh, Calle of the Oven. We have like 31 of them uh, where they make bread. We have the Calle del Magazine, we have 16, which magazine means warehouse, and the Spezier, which is basically a place where they see species. We also have a lot. So how do the... Uh, uh, Melbourne finds the streets if they have the same names. Eh? The streets they don't go by name, but they go by name and the uh, the quartier, as we call it, of Venice. You see that we have six, including the Judeca Island, and even the Melbourne though get lost, and so we do as a Venetian. So I get getting lost. It's like a team of going to Venice. And by the way, next October, if you want to come to Venice with me, we're going to Italy next uh, next October. COVID-19 per meeting, and one of the stops, of course, is going to be Venice, so we will be walking the Zido streets, and we will be taking the boats, and we're going to have tons of fun, we're going to have gelato, we're going to have cooking class, we're going to have wine drinking, so hopefully next October you can join me, and we fly to Venice, Italy, all together, and we have, of course, all the information, which we talk about the streets of Venice, we have to talk also about what goes on the streets, right? normally the cars, but in Venice we have the boats. And the most famous and iconic boats of Venice, of course, are the gondola. I, you may not know, though, that the gondola, JJ can start the video, uh, video, that the gondola actually now are for touristic, but originally they were the fancy cars of Venice. We have almost 10,000 of them, and uh, they were made for rich people. Uh, nowadays, we only have 400 gondolas in all that. And they were covered. You see, they have something like uh, the, to cover the passenger, it was called false. And there is still one that you can see in uh, uh, Carrizzo It's a beautiful one, and they have beautiful uh, things. And they had also, look at here, the Venetian blinds, which we call in Italy, you see them, we still have them in Venice. We call them Persiane, which means from Persia, because they came from Persia. And uh, so you call them all over the world uh, Venetian blinds because you the, the people saw them in Venice, but originally they were from Persia, from, which is now Iran. And all the painters find them very, uh, very nice. So they, you find a lot of paintings with those. And how did they get to America, if you're wondering, and the rest of the world? Well, in America, they got here by a, a, a guy from London in the 1700s. He saw them in Venice and he opened a store in Philadelphia and he became so popular that in no time, all those Venetian blinds were sold all over the country. In a matter of fact, all over the world. And they're called Venetian blinds. Keep in mind, we call them in Italy Persiane. Why did we love the Persiana very much in Italy? 
uh, and especially in Venice, because Venice is a small place, and a problem for uh, one of the things, for instance, uh, why the Carnaval originated in Venice is because Venice is a small island where we all know each other, so there was no privacy. So they started to have a Carnaval, so that people could hide behind those masks and they could go crazy and be other people, you know. And uh, the, the, the good things about the Persiana, the Venetian blinds, was that they were covering the people from the sun, but still they could look inside and spy the neighbors, and they were not completely sealed, so they could still hear what was happening around. It's a Venetian thing. We are very noisy and curious. Diane, you have to give me a sign for curious, because we are nosy. Is this any chance? Uh, if I'm Italian, I would say, we really like to know what other people are doing. So I need a sign, a sign, an RCL sign, uh, Diane, for noisy people. That's what the Venetians are. I think I got into uh, all that I wanted to tell about Venice, believe it or not. So now I can tell you without further ado, before we do birthday and events, thanks also with the help of Roger Stallion, we are going to be uh, cooking. And keep in mind, this is my cocktail. So while I'm having my cocktail in my hand, I'll show you how I make this delicious and Venetian traditional recipe, Rizzi e Busy. Oh, JJ, love me to finish your thing. So, guys, if the camera or the pictures are not coming later during the birthday and events, it's because JJ finished the whole glass I gave him to him. And bear in mind, he's not a heavy drinker just like me. So, I think he's going to take a nap this afternoon after lunch. So, here is how you make one of the most famous and traditional recipe of vets. Risi e Bisi, so it's a Venetian style uh, risotto with peas. Here has how you make it, JJ, you can start the video, but I made it this morning, this one is still warm, I'm ready for me to have it in a second. So here are the ingredients, of course, Venetian style rice and peas, you see I brought myself, I forgot to tell you the recipe. Here we have olive oil, of course, only a few onions, then you need butter, you need some pancetta, you need some avorio rice, very important when you use any other kind of rice. And then you need a, a chicken stock, a vegetable, I prefer actually, a fresh or frozen peas, parsley, and you need some parmesan cheese. This is all. If you come back to me, JJ, I'll show you. So today I am cooking this uh, risotto with little peas, and the ingredients are olive oil. You need, of course, some uh, olive oil rice. You need salt and pepper, of course. Then you need some chicken stock. Then you need some pancetta, which is just a, a very specific uh, Italian meat. Then you need onions. Here they are, my little onions. You can see them. You need some fresh parsley. And of course, you need some butter. Yes, butter. And of course, some Parmesan cheese. So only a few ingredients, because you remember, Italian recipe are the easiest. My grandmother used to say, if you have more than four ingredients, and the four ingredients don't include oil, salt, and pepper, or even that chicken stuff, they have to have four ingredients. So they have rice, they have, of course, uh, uh, pancetta, they have onions, and I forgot my pea. Uh, the, 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 here they are, because they are frozen, so I can take them out. Where are my peas? Oh, I finished them all. That's why I didn't have them there. So. And I use the frozen one, which keep in mind, you can use the fresh one. In Italy, we use a lot, we have to sometimes to the garden, so my mom used the, the, the fresh one. So you just peel them off. And actually, the, the, the not frozen cook even faster, because this one has to defrost first, and then you have to cook. So without further ado, it takes you in total to make it. This is a controversial thing. Like uh, last week, we made the pasta la bolognese, you remember? Uh, it can take four or five hours. Uh, me, I'm a modern woman, and I don't have four or five hours to cook. So I don't have four or five hours to to make anything. Normally, normal life when I'm touring and do my concert, even less. Even now, though, I don't want to spend four hours cooking. I have other stuff to do. I have to keep company to you. So what I do, and I've learned this actually from my mom. If you have a, a pan like this one, and you can close it when you put the liquid in. It's like kind of steaming inside, so it cooks faster. And we say in 20 minutes you can do what normally would take you 45 minutes. Of course, you have to keep an eye that uh, there is always water inside because you don't want the rice to 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 burn. So you have to to keep an eye on it. But so I, I'm able to make any kind of result in 20 minutes. And I know Natalie that I saw before from France. France, she lived with me for uh, actually a year. Uh, she went back to France last year. 
and she was surprised how delicious my risotto were and how easy and fast were to make it. She was sort of like, making risotto! She had learned also herself how to make the risotto. My own way. Easy. So try, make sure that you have something like this one that you can cover it up when you have the water. Just keep it open and every 10 minutes, just keep an eye on it and add some water if it's not ready. JJ is going to start the video and I show you how easy it is to make a risi at BC. That is a traditional Venetian recipe. How to make a risi at BC Venetian style. Very, very easy, guys. Here we go. So you just have to uh, put some olive oil on the skillet. And anti aderente, as we say, so you put some olive oil. You're gonna add your onions. I'm gonna tell you in a second. I like this little onion because they're kind of sweet. I'll show you which one they are. But anyway, you cook your onions, then you add your pancetta. Here you find it already cut it. If not, it's in a big piece, like, uh, uh, and you can cut it in little pieces. You um, cook it a little bit. You just let it, maybe five minutes, you add salt and pepper. Not too much. I know you, uh, some people, you have problem with salt, so just a little less is more. And then you put your peas here. You see, I put inside the frozen one, and you let them uh, cook and add in a little bit of chicken or vegetable stock. I do prefer the vegetable, or you can put even the chicken stock. It depends on your taste. The chicken is more salty, of course. I don't like salt. And as I said, you cover it up, keep an eye on it, make sure that uh, uh, it doesn't burn. When the water is almost done, means the peas are cooked, you add your uh, riso and boiled rice, make sure. You had a little bit of water and you cook, uh, you cook it uh, for like, I would say, 10 minutes. You close the, the things like that. Keep an eye, add water. If you don't see the water, then with a little spoon, you can see if it's ready. When it's almost ready, you put the fresh parsley and you put butter. You can put even some uh, fresh if you want to. And it's basically ready. You try it with a little spoon, as I said, to make sure that the rice is cooked. It will take, you can read. This is their boiled rice. And why do I say to use their boiled? Because this is their boiled rice is the rice that come actually from the region where the risotto originated. And it is very special because when it cooked, it is kind of glue a little bit. Which I, that's why you can make risotto and they are very creamy. Because if you use the normal white rice, it's going to be very dry and you're never going to get the risotto thing. So if the risotto is not good, just buy the boiled rice. And I promise you, any kind of risotto you're going to make is going to taste good. So here is my risotto, as I told you, as you can see, the cream and the butter is all around there. And at this point, after 20 minutes of fun, you're just going to put it on your plate. I'm going to do it because I'm going to be serving JJ because he had the whole cocktails. I don't want him to get drunk. So you're going to put it on your plate. Guys, believe me, this is the most delicious things, easy things that you can make for yourself. And it's super delicious. Oh, and a little thing, somebody uh, was asking me how do you, uh, for the portion of rice. In Italy, we drink a cup of coffee in this kind of cups. This is an espresso cup. And it's very easy. I learned actually this from my grandmother. That she always say that a portion of riso, a riso for, for a person is one cup and a half. So if you cook for, for two, for instance, like I do, are exactly three cups of uh Coffee. So you put them in. So if you don't have this one, of course, is uh, almost a, a half a cup of the normal a big, big one. But I always make it with this one because it's easy, and as you can see. So this is one. I'm gonna make one also for myself, and I'm gonna serve JJ, which is already, as we say in Italy, con la culina in bocca, is already dreaming about having the risotto. JJ, you're gonna have also a little, a bigger portion of the risotto. There we go. Yeah. I'm gonna make sure that I clean completely my skillet because it's too delicious to leave it there. JJ, are you ready? I'm ready. JJ, are you ready? So here we go. A little bit going out, so I can put it in there without further ado. Yes, my helpful. At this point, you do what we always do with all the recipes. You're gonna put some Parmesan cheese. We need to put Parmesan cheese in our risotto. And if you want, you can also put some extra fresh parsley if you have it. It gives some color and the, the, the peas are delicious with parsley. And here it is. Mm -hmm. It smells delicious, guys. This is the moment. You've been with me for six months. This is always the moment where I wish you guys were here with me. So, JJ. This is the one for JJ, as you can see. Can you guys see the portion? 
JJ, this is yours. Bon appetito, I would say. And this is mine. I'm going to taste it for you because you guys are not here with me. It's delicious. You know, I always let you know if it's, um, what can you do if you have leftover? Well, if you have leftover, you can put it in your refrigerator and have the day later, but please warm up your rice. I, risotto cold is not really the best thing you can have. Guys, I wish you were here with me. This is just delicious. We make a Venetian style rice and peas, which we call it in Venice. Easy and busy. One of the most traditional, simple food of the Venetian. It's like a pasta fagioli, like a beans pasta. Actually, we should make it one of these days. Those, uh, they call it uh, Cucina Povera, the kitchen of the poor people. Because this is what the Venetians had in 1900. They only had rice, they had peas, and they had a little bit of meat. And they were making this delicious food with really four ingredients. And it's the best things you can have. I cannot wait to have my risotto, but before we do that, of course, we're going to close the episode as always while I'm having my cocktail, the birthday and events of this week, since the whole week I wasn't with you. I want to thank also Roger Scalio, that not only helped me with my new computer that I'm going to get in 10 days, I will never stop being grateful and saying that, because it's been a very stressful week with my computer. Thursday was really impossible for me to go home, so that's never going to happen again, thanks to you. Thank you to Roger Stanley, lovely man. And he has also been sending me since uh, Doug, you know, is uh, retired for his positions because he's uh, taking care of his grandkids. And by the way, Doug, I will see you here, but I hope you're doing well. I was in contact with Doug this morning. He had some health issues, so I hope he's feeling better. Feel better. We love you. And I said to him, it's uh, just a little, you know, he lives in Sacramento, bad hair. He has some problem with uh, his lungs, so bad hair for sure, even now. So that feel better, and hopefully I'll see you tomorrow on my Patreon. And so that started these traditions, together with me with birds and events, and now I have a Roger texting me some of the events, and I put them all together, and here they are. Events in history this week. So this week, last Monday, actually just one, in 1840, William Henry Fox Talbot, while experimenting with gallic acid, a chemical that was uh, informed would increase the sensitivity of the prepared paper, discovered that the acid can be used to develop a Latin image on paper, leading to a revolution in photography. That's the first pictures ever made with that system. That is not a very bright color, but hey, that was the beginning. And also this week, um, Tuesday, actually, in uh, the 22nd, in 1994, France, the television series, debuted on NBC. 1994, ladies and gentlemen. This is 26 years ago. Unbelievable. And uh, also this week in 1962, ABC first color TV series, The Jackson, uh, by Hanna Barbera, first broadcasted happen. Can you believe it? That was how they imagined us in the future. They didn't mention COVID 19. Uh, they, they thought we were flying. Yeah, we are not even able to go outside our house. Mm -hmm. Also, this week on the 24th, Albert Einstein in 1947, Professor Albert Einstein, was asked by friends at the dinner party while having food. They asked him which kind of weapons may uh, be used by the World War III if it was happening. And he famously answered, JJ has a card, he said, I don't know what happens, what, what weapons will be used on World War, II, but I'm, World War III, but I know that World War IV will be fought by sticks and stones. Thank God we never had that issue. And uh, we go to 1984 in a second because I see that my computer is having a little glitch. So JJ is trying to solve this little problem. We are going in a second to talk about Paul McCartney. That in 1984 release, No More Than We Guys, would it be a song that we can sing tomorrow? By the way, because you know, every time we have events at birthday of the week, then at Sunday we ended up singing some of those songs. So maybe that's a beautiful song to uh, sing tomorrow. What do you guys think? For you guys of my team, awesome team, awesome that I want to picture. 1984, Paul McCartney, no more lonely nights, which would be nice for all of us, right? We want to stay together. And also this week on the 25th, in 1979, believe it or not, Evita opens at Broadway Theater in New York City and will stay there for. 1,568 performance, 1,000, 
568 performances in the still will of Evita. Maybe that's another song to do. Don't cry for me, Argentina. You guys let me know. And September 26, uh, 1957, Bernstein and his own line musical West Side Story premieres on the Winter Garden Theater in New York City. Oh, West Side Story. That's going to be one of my favorite scenes forever. 1946, also the first editions, we go to Holland, JJ, of 1010. It's called Kautje in Holland. Uh, was published. They went on publishing it until 1993. Can you believe it? They started in 1946. And they went on until 1992. We love Kautje, 1010. In 1949, also this week, groundbreaking ceremony for the Hollywood sign in Hollywood. You will see a picture here. They took down the old Hollywood land, uh, was torn down, and, and the, the reconstruction began for the new one, the new Hollywood sign. And actually, the one that we have now was put up in 1973, and is now as the status of historical cultural monuments, and uh, they will never touch it and take it down again. We come to the birthday of this week. A lot of musicians and amazing people were born this week. 1934, we started there. Uh, uh, last Monday, Leonard Cohen, Canadian singer and songwriter, was born in Montreal, Quebec. For all the friends in Montreal, Quebec, there he is. One of his most famous songs is Hallelujah. Maybe another beautiful song to do tomorrow, right? That's a beautiful song for you, I think. 1967, country singer and songwriter Faith Hill, one of my favorite, was born in Richland, Mississippi. And I love some of the quotes. She said, When I wake up in a bad mood, I try not to say anyone. Learn to make the best of what you have. What a beautiful, smart lady she is. Happy birthday to Faith Hill. Tuesday, also the 22nd, another dear friend of mine was born. Uh, you saw my social media, the pictures of me and him when we performed together last year. Uh, Andrea Bocelli was born in Laliatico, Italy, and turned 62 years old. I was in contact with him. He's doing well, he's happy. And I love the quote that he said, Destiny has a lot to do with it, but so do you. You have to preserve and to act. To insist, to have to insist. That's really Andrea. Perseveranza and insistenza. Tanti auguri, carissima Andrea. And also Wednesday, the 23rd, in uh, 480 BC, before Jesus Christ, Octavius Caesar Augustus, the first Roman emperor, was born in Rome today. Fun facts, the month of August was named after him. Well, better not. And in 1920, Actor Mickey Rooney was born in Brooklyn, New York. Fun facts about him, believe it or not, not the most handsome fellow I've ever seen, but he was married eight times, being Ava Garner, the first wife. How can you divorce Ava, uh, divorce Ava Garner and then find a woman better than her? Apparently, even Ava Garner wasn't enough for them. 1926, and I'm one of my favorite musicians, Joel Coltrane, jazz saxophonist and composer, is born in Hamlet, North Carolina. And his quote is spectacular. He said, I think music is an instrument. I can create, it can create the initial thoughts, patterns that can change the thinking of the people. And it's so true. Music is magic and I feel blessed. Also in 1930, another one of our favorite, Ray Charles, was born in Albany, Georgia. Uh, and uh, one of his famous uh, quotes, thanks to Roger, uh, that he let me know, is, you better live every day like it's your last, because one day you're going to be alive. How clever it was, right, Charles? And it's so true, right? Every day is like can be the last one. September 24, also this week in, 1990, in 1896, we go back a lot on, Francis Scott Keith Zerot, the novelist that wrote The Great Gatsby, was born in St. Paul, Minnesota. Famous quote is, it takes two to make an accident. So it's never the only one person, right? It's all of us together. And in 1949, another one of our favorite musicians, Bruce Springsteen, singer and songwriter and musician, was born in Long Branch, New Jersey, and turned 71 years old. You see the fan fact is of Dutch, Irish, and Italian descent, which bring me JJ is Dutch, Roger is Irish, to tell me this, and I am Italian. So Bruce Springsteen is all of us together. And Roger shared a beautiful story with him. He said that in 1970, when Roger came from London, he was living near San Francisco. Apparently, Bruce Springsteen, a young kid, he was part of um, a band called The Steel Mill. The Steel Mill, they were trying to break in the, in the group of Bill Graham circuit, but of course, they weren't able to make it. They were rock musicians, they were on the street, and Roger Stallion was living in a big, big five-room condemned house, and he uh, guessed the whole band for a couple of months. Roger said it was a lot of fun. Job well done, because you surely have done well, Rogers, in your life, and so have done Bruce Quincy, which is now the boss. So happy birthday to Bruce, and thank you 
Well, thank you for sharing the beautiful story with me. We come to September, to September 25th, last Friday, with one of my favorite lady of the television, Barbara Walters, was born as an American broadcaster and journalist, and what I love about her, she was the first female network news anchor, and was born in Boston, Massachusetts. I love her. She's a, one of the greatest interviewers I've ever seen. And in 1944, a power couple was born in, in September 25th. Actor Michael Douglas was born in New Brunswick, New Jersey. And far away in uh, Wales was born his wife, Katharina Zeta Jones, that was born in 1969. He turned 76 and she turned 51. They are beautiful and beautiful together. And I love that she said, How was the secret of a long marriage? She said, Have a bathroom with two saints. How clever is that woman? And today, we come to today, version of today, and we go to Italy for a second, where one of my favorite saints was born today, San Francesco d'Assisi, in 1181, the founder of the Franciscan Order, was born in Assisi, Italy, and uh, at the time was the only woman empire, now it's Italy, of course. Um, one of his favorite quotes, many, and many, he said, start by doing what's necessary, then do what's, impossible, what's possible, and suddenly you are doing the impossible. That's so true. Now, 1898, another one of our favorite, George Gershwin. We had uh, one of his songs on the Java Live last Sunday. George Gershwin, composer, was born in Brooklyn, New York. One of his quotes, life is a lot like jazz. It's best when improvised. It's my way to play, it's my way to live in, uh, to making cocktails. I'm improvising because I don't know what I'm doing. Thank you, George Gershwin. And going to England for the, one of the last uh, birthday of today, in, in 1948, British Australian singer and actress Olivia Newton John was born in Cambridge, England, and turned today 72 years young. Fun facts uh, she almost turned down the chance to play Sandy because she thought she was too old for the part. She was at the time 28 and she was playing an art school student, and she thought she was too old. Thank God she said John Travolta was so charming. And they were kind of in love, and she said yes to the part. Thank God Olivia did it. And this was the last Thursday of the day with Olivia Newton Jones. Maybe we can do a song from Greece on Sunday. Guys, this was so much fun. I'm happy that my computer with a little glitch of a second for the rest survived the whole episode. Let me see who is there. William Matza is there. Jenny Darling, I love you. Ronnie Manicott is there. They always deliver the coffee. Richard, you are there. I thank you before for delivering me the stand where, for the Instagram camera. And then who else is there? I see some new people. Uh, Daniel. And I see uh, the new people. Where are you guys watching from? Of course, I didn't see Instagram because you're turning the other side. So let me know where you're watching from. I see Diane and Sal. I love you guys. There is this beautiful video of What a Wonderful World with Sign Language because September is actually is the month of death awareness. So I made this beautiful uh, video of What a Wonderful World. Make sure that you go on my Patreon page, patreon.com, if you want to see it right now, if you can wait, and otherwise it's going to be there next week also on YouTube and Facebook. Please join me, I would say, on Patreon if you... I love music. If you want to be entertained by music, tomorrow I'm going to see you on Patreon. We're going to be singing some of the songs I haven't decided yet. So we're going to have music tomorrow and I'm going to be playing also once again the video of What a Wonderful World. And I see if I can sing. I see trees of green while singing. I don't know. I'm going to try this afternoon. If I can do it tomorrow, I will sing it with my voice and sing it with my hands the whole time. It is really a wonderful world with all of you inside. You are my circle of love. I love you guys. Thank you for this. I'm going to enjoy my busy Aditi. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel and please like my Facebook page if you haven't done it yet. I'm going to be adding my Aditi Aditi. This is the recipe we make. Buon appetito e ci vediamo Tuesday, martedì, for a special guest. Bye bye. Thank you for watching. Love you guys. Mm. Danke schön, dear oh, danke schön. Thank you for seeing me again. Though I'm here in my solitude, I know you are there, and in my heart I smile again, and so I see. Waiting to see you same time, same place
nights And I can't wait to say again Danke schön, danke schön, danke schön Dear old Alfie to say See you tomorrow, a domani.